So we're really excited to share about this new update we have been working on for launch control. So this animation here we were doing with the new update and this is a Hennessy Venom running around a racetrack. And we've been animating everything with the new speed segments inside launch control. So this particular animation is running in Eevee inside Blender in real time. The physics are calculated on the fly as well as the skid marks that are also being generated on the fly. So if you were to take a look at how we animated this, the typical approach would be that we would basically select this speed handle and then jump into our graph editor. And here we would be messing around with keyframes. Because of that, we have made the new speed segment tool. So this tool tries to help animators to do their job quicker and better by actually giving them speed keyframes that they can adjust over time along the path. So as you can see here, we have some different points around the path. And instead of these being positions, it's actually speeds that we want the vehicle to be at at certain points. You can also see we have a graph here in between, and this basically shows us the speed over time. We can increase this graph scale a little bit to be able to see more the difference in speed. We can see how we begin the animation, the car speeds up, it slows down slightly around this turn. And then when we get to this point right here, we have a quite drastic drop in speed because we are decelerating from 200 kilometers per hour to zero here where we come to the end of the path. So the way we would change any of these points, if we play back here, you can see how the car goes through the turn. And here the car is going a little bit slower. So if we wanted to drop even more speed, what we can do is literally just take this keyframe and just decrease the velocity at this point. And because we already defined that the speed here going into the corner would be 130, the deceleration will happen between these two keyframes. So if we increase the time here, you can see how the graph dynamically updates all the time to indicate what sort of speeds we'll be getting. As you can see, it's a very intuitive process. It's very straightforward and it can give you a lot of control and flexibility with very few clicks. Apart from that, we also made it easier to set up multiple objects for ground detection. So in this case, for what you would do was have to drop in the objects into the ground detection collection. You can still do this and that works perfectly fine. But now you have the option of instead just removing and adding objects inside this ground colliders menu. So you click all the objects you want to add and simply select them and click add selected. By doing that, they are part of the ground detection and they will now be calculated as well when calculating the ground detection. Likewise, you can also remove objects just by selecting them and clicking remove selected. And you can always see in here which objects are being considered for the ground detection. Apart from that, we also recently introduced a new way of checking if you're using the latest version of launch control. So if you're not using the latest version, you can head into the add-ons panel and click this little update button just to check for any potential updates to the add-on. If there are any updates, it will let you know and you can go straight to the download page. Another recent feature is the garage mode, which is a replacement of the old rig setup mode. This mode is basically built for whenever you have an animation where you have your car animated, it's ready, then somebody requests you to swap a part of the car or a wheel in the car or something like that. It can be difficult to do that if your vehicle is in a very peculiar position in the scene or rotation. So what you can do is click this garage mode. What happens when you do that is that your car will be localized, it will be put into the center of the scene, and here you can do all your edits to your car while it's in the static mode. All animations will be disabled and they will be stored. So you can do all your exchanges and then when you're done, click back to race mode and you're back in the animation again. So nothing is going to happen to the animation or the setup of the car, but uh, the car is just being temporarily put here in the center of the scene and everything else removed so you can do your edits safely. Lastly, we've been working on a few new animation presets that are just going to be in the next version of Launch Control and help you get stuff animated quicker. So one of the new animation assets is this burnout animation where you can see the car doing a burnout uh, where after it just drives off into the distance. So this could be useful if you need to do a little bit of an action scene somewhere. The next one is a new drift animation that has the car going on top of the, well, you guessed it, the LC logo and doing some small cool drifts up there. The last new preset animation is this drag strip race, where you can see your car pulling up to the starting line before it zooms down the straight, seeing how fast it will go. Let's just turn on the speedometer so we can actually see how fast our car is here. Launch Control 1.6 is online now for all existing and new users. 
And if you haven't already, check out our growing Discord community for automotive artists, where you can find more info about all these things. See you around. <laughs>